Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special bonus episode. And uh, today we're going to talk about opportunity-based agile coaching with uh, the person who coined the phrase, Peter Rubarth. Hey, Peter, welcome to the show. Hi, Vasco. Nice to be here. Absolutely. So Peter's fascination with Agile began when Scrum helped to transform a seemingly impossible mission into a triumph. This motivated his passion for guiding teams towards outcome-focused agility. And embracing these principles in his Agile coaching, Peter focuses and champions the cause of elevating Agile coaching as a profession, which is exactly what we are going to talk about today. So, uh, Peter, this was a short intro. Uh, we want to know more, right? We're going to explore the concept of opportunity-based Agile coaching. But before you go into all of those details, give us just a quick intro so that we can understand the concept. Um, yes, of course, Vasco. Um, so first, um, I, it's important for me to say that um, opportunity-based agile coaching is is not a method, and it's not really something fundamentally new. Yeah, it's just something that I realized that I'm doing, and and then I I was curious to understand a bit better what I'm doing there to you do it more deliberately. Yeah, and this is also so what what I want to talk about and help people maybe realize that they are doing it all the time, and and then uh, they can can focus on doing it more effectively maybe yeah so so first i would say it's a deliberate use of existing momentum in a company yeah, to to realize what is already happening or what is about to happen and how we can use this momentum um, to do positive change and by doing so using the energy in the company efficiently and also using our energy efficiently because we're building um on something that is already there and if we are lucky we are building something like a resonance so if i understand correctly trying to translate this into my own words uh this opportunity based agile coaching is about being able to sense what are the dynamics that are in place uh, so either started or getting started and then figuring out how we can use those dynamics to achieve the outcomes that we were hired for, right? Because as coaches, we, we have a contract, whether it is an employment contract or a consulting contract, or even an implicit agreement with the stakeholders we work with. Is that how you would define it? Um, yes, yes, I think that's, uh, um, that's what I mean. Uh, so to to see what are the trends, what are people paying attention to, what do we care about, um, where is the energy? Um, and then, and I think this is something where we will get to, um, uh, to, to see how can we use this energy to, uh, to um, for, um, facilitate the, the changes that we have been hired for or what that we care about. Um, and this is actually, I think it's an important precondition to know um, to know what we want to achieve, um, but in a different way, maybe than in other approaches. So, what do you mean by that? Knowing what we want to achieve in a different way. Um, I was thinking about because if I say I do uh, opportunity-based agile coaching, then there might or well, needs to be something different to compare to, and and I can see, let's say, two different approaches. And one, I would say, is something I would call a plan-based approach, yeah, maybe a transition or transformation, yeah, where someone comes up with um, a desired state, which is different from the actual state, and then there is something, yeah, like a plan how to get from A to B. Um, and and for me, uh, that, that might make sense in certain situations, but it's also mm, inherently not so agile. I would not say unagile. Yeah, but it's a plan and it has an it, it, it based on the idea that you know what is the desired state uh, and that you can develop um, activities that if you execute them will lead you there. Yeah, which is, I, I think, sounds pretty waterfall to me. Um, and then I would say there's another, uh, um, another approach where 
someone, a stakeholder, a team, um, a manager comes to me and says, here, this is, uh, this is my problem. Can you help me with that? And then we, we agree on a coaching goal and work on that. Yeah. Which again is also totally nice, fine. Uh, but uh, when I was working solely in that mode, I realized uh, that I'm getting certain requests I'm getting. And certain requests I would like to get, but I'm not getting because nobody wants to to make them. Yeah, and um, there, therefore, this is a missing opportunity. Um, and so for me, um, opportunity based agile coaching is is different in that it kind of generates requests, um, and that it does not have a predefined target state, um, which is like a checklist or so, but you still have an idea what good and working agility looks like or feels like. Um, so you can compare what you observe in the day to day to what you think would be a good, good situation or um, an ideal situation, maybe even. So it's, if I understand it correctly, um, and we will dive a little bit more into comparing this with other approaches, but if I understand correctly, this is about us starting from a goal that is partly built with the client if there's a request partly built with our own understanding of what are the dynamics the trends that are in place and also partly built with what we think would be a positive movement for the organization team or stakeholders we're working with right is that is that how you see it Um, yes and no. I would say at this stage, uh, when we are starting, uh, the, the trends and momentum are not so important. Uh, I would say the, the business model, the strategy of the company is important. And what is also really helpful is to have an idea um, how we want to work in the company. What are our principles? What is important for us? So to basically understand what are possible solutions and what are not possible solutions. Um, and to have something, to have something like an umbrella, to say, okay, we we have a business model. We, we I mean, some things are simple. Yeah, we have a B two B business model, or we have a B two C, and we have certain trends in the market, and maybe the rate of change is increasing, which is probably the same in every company. Yeah, but you will also have specific challenges in the market and also in a company. And I think having a shared understanding. Um, uh, with with the conversation partners, what these are, and what aspects of agile or agile working would would be useful to have. I think this is the conversation we need to have um, to to have a shared understanding of. Where, um, I struggle a bit, bit with the word vision because it's so big. Yeah, but of the direction. Yeah, how how success would look like if we are getting there. How we would notice it. Okay, so uh, this is actually an important question. What does success look like? Um, and I'm, I mean, in uh, getting from your description that actually part of this opportunity-based agile coaching is about having that conversation, right? Like establishing that umbrella, as you called it, that includes understanding the business model, the strategy, but also understanding, okay, so where are we going? Like, what are the things that we are trying to put in place, not necessarily a vision, as you said, but a direction, right? Like uh, maybe uh, agreeing on what are the challenges that we care about, uh, agreeing on maybe what are the aspects of our current culture we want to keep and maybe others we are not so proud of. Is that how you see it? Uh, yes, exactly. So it's a, it's a shared understanding um, uh, with the, with, with, between uh, us as agile coaches and the conversation partners. What do we believe we need? Maybe qualities in in our way we work to be to be cons uh, successful or to continue to be successful. Um, and also to say, okay, maybe have some kind of um, observable criteria how we would know that this is the case or not the case. So it, it sounds to me that one of the aspects that would differentiate this from a traditional, uh, let's call it request-based coaching engagement is that first it starts with you already being in place, right? Like if you're not there, you can't, you know, detect the dynamics and, and start that conversation you were referring to. So you're, you're in an organization already. And then you're looking at, okay, so I, I have these things I need to do. Those are probably like request triggered coaching opportunities. 
but I see all of these other things that might be necessary, but it shouldn't be me as the coach saying that they are necessary. And then as the coach, I take the maybe responsibility, but also leadership in starting those conversations to create that shared understanding and then ultimately find, and I guess that's what you meant. I don't, you didn't use the word, but I'm implying here, find the coaching opportunities through those conversations. Uh, yes, I think this this is correct. Um, so first, it's uh, and I think it's it's something which is really a USP or uh, for uh, internal agile coaches because you are there uh, permanently and for a long time, and then you have a chance uh, to notice a lot more. Yeah, you also become a bit more blind than than an external because yeah, you're getting used to stuff. Yeah, but you you have the chance to get a very intimate understanding of the organization, and you have a chance to get. Um, have these conversations and build the shared understanding where you want to go to. And then then basically that helps you to know what you want to look for, yeah, uh, what opportunities you are looking for or what you need. And now I need to think a little bit. Um, you can generate requests somehow. Uh, so so you have and I mean, as an internal agile coach, or at least the way I work, you work on different levels. You work on the level of the whole organization, you work on the level of maybe departments and also on the level of teams. Yeah, and so for me, the the, the, the vision for the overall company is it's what I'm starting with. Yeah, but in order to achieve it, there has to be change uh, within the organization, with, with con specific teams or how these teams work together. Yeah, but and, and I need to know where uh, what, what we think we need to to develop uh, in, in qualities to to see where where are missing parts or things that are dysfunctional or whatever and then i can see okay um how can i approach them and then right. so what conversation do i need let, let's translate this into something concrete peter so we we've talked about the overview we've talked about some of the kind of building blocks of this opportunity based agile coaching share with us a story of how this happened with you in practice what were the key lessons but first tell us the story like step by step what was happening and then we'll we'll work on the key lessons after that uh, yes i will vasco so uh, there was one uh, um, situation not so long ago um there where i was in an engagement um which was characterized let's say by teams which are very autonomous um which have uh, clear uh, team level goals, what they want to achieve, they have their ways of working. Um, and all these teams together are responsible for a bigger pro pro uh, product, which is basically com com um, comprised of the, the contributions of these individual teams. Yeah. And that was working to a certain degree. Uh, but what I could notice is that these teams are work were working quite independently from each other. And there was not a level of inter-team collaboration that I would find appropriate. Yeah, so this was, let's say, the part of the bigger vision to say, uh, if we have a shared product, there needs to be a certain level of inter-team collaboration um, to, uh, to um, be effective, to help each other out, to avoid dependencies and so on. Yeah, and uh, in this organization, there was some allergic reaction uh, if you started a conversation about more alignment or maybe coordination or shared planning so, so can you give us give us an example of what that allergic reaction sounded like as you as you were part of those conversations so so when 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 for example i would try to have this conversation then people would um from my perspective assume a lot of bad things immediately so that they would spend um, their, their days in um, painful planning meetings with other teams that would not get anything done. They would lose their um, autonomy, wouldn't be able to decide anything. So they were um, right at the beginning of the conversation, there was so much concern that it would be costing a lot of effort to push through these concerns or to have um, arguments if that is true or not or whatever so it would, would cost a lot of energy to get past this immediate hurdle so you were finding that 
the words and the concepts you were presenting were being uh, rejected. <clears throat> we talk about resistance, of course, but in, yes. in this case, it's, it's, we're just talking concepts. So we're not talking about any change yet. It's just ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess it's more appropriate to say that the, these ideas were being maybe even emotionally, viscerally rejected. Yeah, so yes, exactly. So they were associated with some bad experience that people had before or they imagined they would have. And so there was immediate immediate resistance um, to even engage in how that could look like and what problems could occur and how, what we could do to not have these problems. So, so that it was difficult to start a conversation in that direction. And how did then that story evolve? Yeah, so... So the first step was to acknowledge that uh, that this could be an, an important development for an organization and that there is this immediate reaction so that there, there is re resistance and then do nothing with it and wait and say there is there is too much resistance. It's not worth the effort and uh, do something else, which right now works better and just wait for the right moment. And this right moment came uh, then uh, due to certain changes in the environment. There was an, a clear case for uh, changing the strategy of the organization. And in order to achieve that strategy, that there was uh, a certain, another level of focus needed. So, so the teams had to align on something in order to have the necessary impact. And that was quite obvious for everyone. And this was the opportunity to say, okay, now there is a case which makes sense for everyone, which, which ca everyone can agree, and we can use that work on on this uh, this mutually agreed need and by working on that maybe we find a way to increase the inter-team collaboration and circumvent this initial resistance uh and if i understand the story right uh it also because the the initial resistance you had experienced before had no reason to exist anymore because now the teams recognize that okay we have a challenge we need to step up to that challenge right yeah, so there was something that was more important than these concerns. And it was also not necessary to say, let's con um, work on the inter-team collaboration, because the question was, how can we align and achieve uh, master this mutual challenge or this common challenge we have? So we didn't talk about change and processes, but we talked about how to um, achieve a business goal. And then we just did it. And uh, I'm guessing that uh, w one of the key lessons is that opportunity-based coaching is also about finding the the um, maybe inflection point where something that we know is a change is not perceived anymore as a change, but it is perceived as a necessary step towards something that is more important, right? Like you talked about that, that yes. goal that required alignment. Uh, yeah. What are some of the other lessons that you took from that story? Um, so what we started, we started very, um, very small. And I think it's, it might be important to say what it means we, because it was not the agile coaches, but it was um, agile coaches to us, uh, together with um, leadership from the organization saying, okay, so, so we have here this objective we need to achieve. There, there is also this opportunity for organizational development. How can we approach it? So, and then, and it was a partnership. Yeah, between the the leadership and the agile coaches, and 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 the first step was to see okay how how do we uh, what do we want to achieve and what is a good strategy, and then we designed the first workshop which was basically uh, based on the assumption that the teams do not know what the other teams are doing. Um, so uh, first step was to have the teams share. Uh, what is their current focus, but framed with this uh, shared objective. It's like in order to achieve that, what are the things that you're already doing in terms of this goal? Um, and uh, then also see what happens. Uh, and, and what happened is that this resonated strongly with the teams. So they, 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 the, 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 the hypothesis that they didn't know what the other teams are doing or had at least no precise understanding, it was validated. So there was a lot of aha moments, insights. Um, and this, this created a tangible energy in the group to see, okay, this is all the things that we do together. 
um, there is a lot of stuff you can draw on that will help us be successful, but it is also way too much for this amount of people and teams. So and this, this then I think created also the, the shared understanding that we need to filter and focus. Yeah. And, okay. And, so that that is another opportunity arising, right? Like as I understand the workshop as it went, it it validated your initial assumption as coaches and leaders, but then it also opened other opportunities like this this uh, dropping stuff and focusing on some other or some of the work mm -hmm. that they were already doing. So that was also a space, I guess we could call it, for finding coaching opportunities, right? Yes, um, to, to, it, it is an immersion process. So we started something and then we, we paid attention to where the energy is and tried to emphasize things which are um, helpful and, and focused on these. And also, let's say the, the amount of energy in itself was a confirmation that there is momentum and that it's worth exploring and to invest in, in this. Um, and then it really was very, so first it was very easy, yeah, because there was so much agreement that this is a good thing. Um, and then we had to figure out what is the next step. So it was in itself, it was an emergent process. So at some point where the, the, the process stabilized and it was easier to see what will be the next step and the step, step after, but after the first workshop, so the first workshop was just guesswork or, or hunch. Uh, and then we really had to sit, okay, with what we do with what we noticed here and what is a good step. And then we had to learn on the way. And how did you then kind of balance, right? Because during that workshop, there's a lot of desires and potential requests coming from the people. And there's also, of course, what uh, leaders and coaches thought was a potential good set of next steps. So how, how do you, in the context of this opportunity-based agile coaching, how do you balance the coach's intuition and expertise with the clients, so the teams in this case, actual desires, right? The things they really wanted to do. So I think in the end, uh, this is always the client uh, who owns uh, or the, the ultimate responsibility for the success uh, of the team or the company. And so, so they need to decide what to do with it. And uh, what I as an agile coach do is I share my perspective. So first my observation, what has happened, where I see the opportunities, why I think it's a good idea and how it fits maybe with also the strategic direction we, we um, see for the company and, and make offers. Um, uh, but then also, and I think this is this is maybe important, not as a, as a, a coach in a narrow sense that I just ask questions, but I also have have an opinion or have an idea what is a good direction. Yeah, this is something that was also feedback I got that um, uh, leaders appreciate working with agile coaches as partners achieving a common purpose, and and that also let's say we are spending more. Uh, basically all our days thinking about agility, developing ourselves in that direction. So it is also reasonable to believe that we have some expertise. Yeah. And withholding that expertise because we think we can only ask questions uh, would be unfair. What we actually something uh, other people called malpractice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it's a team effort between the people involved in the change. We, we are responsible for the outcomes and the agile coaches responsible for the process. So when you think about coaches, uh, obviously, we need to develop ourselves constantly. Uh, one of the things that I usually say is uh, it, it's very hard to coach a team or someone if you yourself are not being coached. So it's important also to accept that the coaching process is something we need to practice from both sides so that we learn how to communicate, how to engage, how to observe, how to feel where the energy is going, because if we can feel it in ourselves, we can start to see it in others as well. Uh, it's great to define and develop these partnerships, as you say, partnerships with uh, with uh, leadership. But what, what are some of the common challenges that you say, that you see agile coaches, especially those that may never have been aware of this process as you define it, how, how can or what are the challenges that you expect agile coaches may face when under trying to understand and implement this opportunity based coaching? 
So my the first answer that comes to my mind is humility. I, I think they said it's the first step to accept that that I by yourself do not have all the answers, or maybe not even have any answers and don't know what is right. I just have a hunch. Um and and I need to learn and to observe and to work with others and then make experiments. I think this is not just true for agile coaching. This is also true for for product development or a lot of other stuff. Yeah, to to accept that the world is complex um, and it is probe sense respond always. Uh, but but I would say that's not always the case, and it's also a bit um, scary. I would say because it's a it's an emergent process. It's a constant journey. Yeah, and you. And you do not have a plan with steps and a, a clearly defined target state that you can come back to. Um, it's it's uh, open water, basically. Um, so I would say this is the first thing. Uh, then you need to be able to notice things. Uh, um, so first, you, you need to learn to observe without judging, just noticing things for uh, and forming a a broader picture. Again, this is something that I think can be a big advantage of internal agile coaches because you work with a lot of teams, especially if you are not just alone, but having multiple coaches working in multiple teams. Um, but it does so does not come automatically. Yeah, you need to find a way to to share your observations, to build a picture, still not to form hypotheses, but not saying this is uh, this is true and this is wrong, but just say this could be an explanation. Yeah, there could also be other explanations. Yeah, and do that in an as efficient in a way that is efficient. So you still have time to work with the teams. Yeah. If you spend the whole time with other agile coaches, yeah, then you are also losing touch with the teams. Um, so I think this is actually not simple. Um, and you need also to earn the trust uh, or the access to, to different people at different stages, the teams, um, the leadership basically everyone uh, so you have the chance to observe you have the chance to have meaningful conversations and learn things so so i would say this these are the most important things um you need to be able to have these meaningful conversations with your sponsors with your uh, senior management whatever uh, that is in your case um to to find out what is the direction that we want to go and i found that difficult in some um uh, setups um to go to to have people where I can have this conversation because we have enough shared understanding that we also are prepared to invest the time which is needed for that. Um, and also are willing to admit maybe where things are not working. So these are preconditions. You can help with that, but if you don't have it, it really gets difficult. And I, I, I was just thinking that this ability to have productive mm -hmm. conversations uh, highlights what I think is one of those key lessons for us as agile coaches, that conversations are dynamics in themselves. Like sometimes asking one question kills the conversation and asking another question opens collaboration, right? And one of the things that we can do with our fellow coaches is actually to practice this, right? We can practice these conversations. And I find that this having productive conversations with sponsors, as you describe, is actually a critical skill for us that is not necessarily part of what we develop, right? Especially for agile coaches that don't have a uh, coaching or psychology background. Uh, we don't get taught uh, high quality conversations at school, especially if you come from in, an engineering yeah. school. Uh, in fact, very often engineering school drive us to low quality, solution centric, narrowing conversations instead of opening, uh, being accepting and exploring conversations. Yeah, so I, I would totally agree. I think for a long time, this is just curiosity and learning. Yeah, there is no no intention other than understanding what is going on. And then maybe getting in at, at the point where you are able to form uh, drive an intuition or to form hunches or to spot opportunities. Absolutely. So. Uh, one of the things that interests me, of course, and uh, I also one of the reasons why I was so happy that you suggested this topic for today's episode is that I find that part of what we need to do, and uh, you also agree, uh, is to help agile coaches and scrum masters up their game, become more professional at the work that that they do and that we do, right? So 
in your experience and from your perspective, how can this opportunity-based agile coaching contribute to that professionalization, to that growth and development of the agile coaches and scrum masters themselves? Uh, thank you, Vasco. Um, I can think of a time in my career where I was constantly frustrated because I found these agile concepts so obvious, but they never seemed to work. Um, and and for me, it, it was really, really helpful to then find different sources, for example, looking as an organization, as a system, a social system, and that helped me to become less frustrated and understand, have different ideas why change is not happening the way I think it should and why it is so difficult. Um, and with the opportunity-based agile coaching, this for me is another puzzle piece because if it works and you can find an opportunity, exploit it, go with the energy, it's so far less frustrating and so much more rewarding um, because some things are actually working and you see the results. Um, and I, I think this is then also giving energy to continue and, and developing. Uh, and I would say this is one big uh, advantage for personal development, yeah, to to be less frustrated and have more success uh, experiences. Um, and also because I would say it's quite fast paced um, because if there's an opportunity, you need to exploit it. You, you need to be ready. You need, if you are working in a team, you need a functioning agile coaches team. You cannot spend two weeks discussing what is the right approach. You need to do it. Or a couple of um, months hiring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You need you have your methods or your ideas how to intervene ready. Um and, and I think this is yeah, you have to build it. Yeah, but but having to build it is also an opportunity because then yeah, you have something you have a task to do for your self-development and you have to focus uh, what you use these uh, these uh, learnings for. And um if it works, you have a lot of opportunities to try things. And I would say a part of opportunity-based agile coaching is experimentation because sometimes the opportunity that you spotted is not there. You just imagined it or it's gone before you did something or your intervention was unsuccessful. And that's also part of, of uh, then uh, the agile coach life to accept that and move on. Yeah, and then not push and try to force it. But move on to something else. Yeah, if it's uh, if there is no energy, then no, don't do something. There is energy, or keep looking. And so first, this this also helps with not getting stubborn on and and like by stubborn on then getting frustrating and maybe even becoming harmful. Um, but also to move faster and learn faster. Uh, you said something there that I think is very important also for me. I mean, that's the reason why I started this podcast in the first place. You said you have to have your methods and practices ready when the opportunity arises, right? And this is what we do here in the podcast is we help you build your toolbox. Uh, we help you to be ready when the opportunity arises. And I, I, I want to emphasize again this idea that you can't coach anyone if you yourself are not being coached. This is a process of learning from both sides, right? We need to, we need to, as coaches, have the opportunity to reflect in our own self-development opportunities. What are the things we are blind to? We cannot explore those unless somebody else is challenging us to think about those. So uh, a great point indeed, we have to have the toolbox ready when the opportunity comes. So, uh, Peter, we're getting close to the end, uh, but for those of us that uh, maybe got piqued in the interest for opportunity-based agile coaching and want to dive deeper into this topic, what's one resource you could recommend for us? Um, yes, Vasco. Um, um, I was thinking about it, and as I said, this is this is not a method I picked up and then applied, but it's something I realized I'm doing, and then I, I tried to to take a step back and re uh, reflect on what I'm doing to be more deliberate in it. Um, but there's still a lot of sources which, which inspired me uh, uh, on my journey and helped me to, to understand at, uh, how to work in that way. And one book that really um, fits, I think, in, in, uh, in this area is um, not an agile book. Uh, but a business book, and it's called Art of Action by Stephen Bungay. And there is um, 
there I learned the term directed opportunism from. Yeah, so it compares um, a, a military concept called mission command um, to, to a business and how you basically frame your intention as a senior manager so that uh, the people on the on the receiving end um, know what you want to get to, but also have the, the leeway to do to see and use opportunities and how and in doing so they support each other. So I found that um, really inspiring and it's a strong recommendation. Um, and, and on the other hand, I also since I realized I'm doing opportunity based agile coaching, I also started to to write about it. And I recently published a mini series in a blog about uh, one specific case, how we did it and, and what, what we learned doing that. Um, so I think this could also be um, an interesting source for anyone who want to dive deeper in that topic. Absolutely. And uh, we'll put the link on the show notes, make sure that everybody can easily find the book and the blog post. Uh, but uh, I think it's uh, time to say thank you very much, Peter, for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Uh, thank you, Vasco. And I'm really uh, happy that you invited me and I had the chance to, to share my, my ideas here uh, and what worked for me. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.